So just like arithmetic sequence, diba? we have the arithmetic sequence. And in the arithmetic sequence, what we did is we look for the next terms using a formula. And then we look for the difference using a formula also. So that's why we are able to find the arithmetic mean. And of course, we look for the sum of the terms, meaning we use the formula for arithmetic series. So, ganun din po dito kay geometric. Okay, meron din tayong geometric series, meron din tayong geometric means. So, let us have first um, a review before we start. So, ano nga ba yung geometric sequence? What is a geometric sequence? Anyone who wants to answer? Review lang tayo of this. When we say geometric sequence, it is, you can also type your answer in chatting in call messages. It is a sequence where Anong class yung sequence po kaya siya? Ano yung ginagawa natin for us to find the next terms? Anyone? What kind of sequence is this? How do you get the next terms? Narinig pa ako, okay, no? Walang sumasagot sa akin. Okay, hindi niyo ako narinig. Narinig ako, okay, no? Oh, kayo ang hindi ko narinig. Narinig ko naman kayo. Yung alam naman sa salita. Aritan nyo. Ma'am. What is a geometric sequence? Geometric sequence is a sequence of number in which the ratio between consecutive terms is constant. Apo, there is a ratio between terms. And how do we get the next terms? Paano natin nakukuha yung mga next terms? Yes, Regent. By multiplying po. Opo, ganun lang kadali. 
is a sequence where the next terms are obtained by multiplying bago magsulat na yun are obtained by multiplying a constant ratio or constant constant number number na ang tawag natin ay common ratio to the preceding terms. Okay, so ganun lang kasimple sa geometric sequence. That for you to get the next terms, all you have to do is to multiply a constant number, which is called common ratio, to the preceding terms. And then you get the next term. Ganun lang siya kadali. So pag nakakalimutan nyo, ano ba yung arithmetic, ano ba yung geometric, all you have to to remember is kapag arithmetic addition, kapag geometric multiplication. Ganun lang. Now, aside from geometric sequence, we also have here the common ratio. And I told you now when we say common ratio, it is the ratio between the terms. Katulad nga ng binanggit na aritan nyo. So if there is a sequence, let's say a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, up to a sub n, para makuha mo yung ratio, all you have to do is to divide. Okay, kasi ratio means division. Ano po yung i-divide natin for common ratio? That is the second term divided by the first term. Third term divided by the second. Fourth divided by the third. Fifth divided by the fourth. And so on. So that is the way on how to solve for the common ratio. Or later... I'll be introducing to you the other formula for ratio. And about, we also have the geometric mean. Abago time of geometric mean. We have the general term for this geometric sequence. And in general term Latin, or also known as the end term. For geometric sequence. Naalala ba? Sige nga, paki-type or paki-open lang yung type. Ano yung general term natin? That's E sub N is equal to? E sub N is equal to? Any gen? A sub 1 po. A sub 1? Ano pa? Times? Times ratio po. Times the ratio raised to? N minus 1. Correct, N minus 1. So this is the general term or N term of a geometric sequence. This is A sub N equals A sub 1 times R raised to N minus 1, where A sub 1 is the first term and R is the ratio, and it is raised to an exponent. Okay, so N minus 1 is an exponent of R. So let's say I have a sequence. Let's say ang sequence natin, geometric sequence, Yes, um, seven hundred. Ano pa ding next term ng one hundred?
Ano kaya yung pwedeng in-extend po kay 100? Pag matagal kayo sumagod sa tanong po, aabotin tayo ng 11. Sagot na kayo agad. Anong gusto niyong next kay 11, kay 100? Na term. Yeah, if you are still there, I want you to raise your hand. Raise your hand. Para malaman ko nandiyan kayo. Huwag niyo ibababa. Ayan. So my first term is 100. What would be my second term? Anong gusto niyo maging second term natin? You can turn on your mic. Ayaw niyo? <laughs> Pasabihin natin 200. Sige. 400. 800. And so on. My ratio would be? What would be my ratio? 2. Two, correct. Now, what if I am looking for a sub 15? So, we will look for a sub 15, right? Tingnan ko muna kung possible na makuha natin si a sub 15. Na possible na makuha natin siya. So, let's say I'm looking for A sub 15. So, all I have to do is use this formula. Substitute the values. Ano na yung mga values na isa substitute ko? Of course, I am, I am going to substitute the N, which is 15. The first term, which is 100. And the ratio, which is 2. So, substitute ko lang siya dito. We'll have... A sub 15 is equal to the first term times R raised to N minus 1. So N natin is 15 minus 1, meaning that's 14. So we have 100 times 2 raised to 14. What is 2 times uh, 2 raised to 14? What is 2 raised to 14? Do you have your calculator? You can calculate. 16,384. 16,384. So, si 2, kapag you raise mo siya kay 14, the answer is 16,384. If you multiply that to 100, so, ano magiging sagot natin? A sub 15 is equal to 1, 6, 3, 8, 4. Dagdag lang tayo ng dalawang zero. So, that's 1,638,400. And that is our 15th term. Okay. So, that is how you solve for the specified term using the general formula. Okay. So don't forget to remember this formula. Lalo na dun sa ating mga susunod na lesson, the geometric mean and geometric series, there is also a formula that you have to remember. Okay? Kaya huwag kakalimutan na tandaan itong mga formula na ito. So I want you to uh, um, lower your hand. And then we will proceed to the Nearpod. What you're going to do is to click the link that I'll be giving sa ating income messages. Or simply go to join nearpod.com and then enter this code. So either of the two. Pwede niyong gawin. Pwede niyong diretso na sa link. Pwede rin namang 
yung code mismo. So, kapag nandito na kayo, all you have to do is to type your name para malaman ko kung sino yung pumasok dito sa Nearpod. And yung mga sa FB Live natin, yung lima, you can also join by clicking the link. So, before we start our geometric mean I would like you to answer some questions for me to know if you have read your module or you have an idea about the topic so there are four students who are now entering the link or who have entered the link pero dalawa pa lang nakakapaglagay ng name that's Rodriguez and Valenzuela. Kahit hindi kayo mag-leave na ating Google Meet, pwede kayo maka-join dito sa ating Nearpod. Okay? So we have Talaro, Legara, and also, you are going to uh, choose kung ano yung character na gusto niya mag-represent sa inyo. We have Aniban, Lapez, yung iba po kaya. Don't worry, later yung mga questions dyan, i-explain ko isa-isa para mas maintindihan niyo. Now yeah, we have Aritanyo. Naging babae si Aritanyo. Babae ba yan? <laughs> How about the others? You can join the link. We have Supremo. Denver. Pinapapili ba kayo dyan ng ano, kung anong gusto nyo yung itsura? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pa lang yun nandito. Ang nasa Google Meet natin ay 25. At ang nasa FB Live natin ay 6. So all in all, 31 lang yung pumasok Pero tingnan niya mamaya pag nag-attendance ako ang dami niya. Ba't kaya ganun? Okay, so we have 11 students, so I think we can now start. So yung iba, I guess, hindi kaya. So you're going to climb, and there is a question. So number one, what is the geometric mean between 3 and 8? So paano ba hinaan yung sound ito? Masakit sa tayo Ayan. Okay. 
So, leading sa ating board is Aniban with 515 points. So, number two, insert two geometric means between 7 and 56. And we have now number one, Supremo Denver. For number three question, what is the sum of the first five terms of a geometric sequence? So you are going to look for the sum. So still leading with 528 points, you have Supremo Denver 8. And question number four, find the sum of the terms of the infinite geometric sequence, 45, 15, 5, and so on. So, sa mga nasa FB Live, kung nasa FB Live kayo, i-type nyo yung points ng leading. Sino ba leading? Ngayon, ang leading natin ay si Ligara, and that is 920. Pakitype yung 920 sa comment section. So, for question number 5, if A sub 1 is 1 half and the ratio is negative 2, what is the sum of S sub 6? So, sa mga nasa FB Live, I want you to type 920 sa comment section. Kung talagang kayo ay nanonood. Okay, so for our overall leading, our leaders, we have Legara Ezekiel with 920 points. We have Lester Rodrigo with, uh, Rodriguez with 912 points. And we have Supremo Denver A with 780 points. So, pwede na kayo mag-leave sa link natin. Sa link na yan ng, ng Nearpod. And then you go back here sa ating Google Meet. So, what do you think is, wait lang, wait lang. Ayan, huwag muna kayo magsasagot dun sa link ng Nearpan. Okay? Huwag muna magsasagot sa link, uh, link ng Nearpan. Ayan. So, how was the experience. Mahirap ba o madali yung, yung questions? Okay, no? Mahirap, Mahirap po. po. Mahirap po. Of course, because you still don't have the entire concept of geometric mean. That's why it is hard for you to answer the questions. Pero, I, I am happy to know that some of you were able to answer. Okay? So what do we mean by geometric mean? Still, when we say geometric mean, it is a term or terms. This is a term or can among terms 
in between two non-consecutive terms. And there are two ways for you to solve for the mean. Kapag mean lang or isa lang, syempre, may mas madaling paraan on how to solve it. Kapag naman two or more, there is a formula. So let us proceed. Let us have yung question number one dun sa inyong uh, near pod. What is the geometric mean between 3 and 8? So we are going to look for the geometric mean between 3 and 8. So para mas madali ninyong maalala yung formula, now we will go back dun sa ratio. Diba? In finding the ratio, you have to get the second term and then divide it by the first term. And that should be equal to the third term to the third term divided by the second term. Dapat yung ratio na to is equal to this ratio. Or should I say that this should be a proportion? Okay? Now, I am going to substitute sa ating a sub 2 and sa ating a sub 1. So our a sub 2 is this. Inawawala. Our a sub 1 is 3. And our a sub 3 is 8. So since our a sub 2 is still unknown, we are going to represent it using a variable. So I'm going to use variable x for that. Okay? Then we will substitute. So pag nag-substitute na tayo, ano yung value ni a sub 2? That's x. Divided by a sub 1, which is 3, equals a sub 3 is 8. And a sub 2 is x. Then, we will cross multiply. So, x times x is x squared equals 3 times 8. And 3 times 8 is 24. Now, we are left with x squared and 24. So, hindi pwedeng x squared ang sagot natin. Ang kailangan natin, yung value ni x. So, para makuha natin yung value ni x, we have to get the square root of both sides. So, if we get the square root of this, makakansa na natin si 2 and yung radical sign. So, we will have x is equal to, then we will look for the factors of 24. Ano-ano ba yung factors niya na merong perfect square. So, one of the factors of 24 is 4 times 6. Yan yung pinili ko. Bakit? Kasi si 4 is a perfect square. Okay? Para masimplify natin siya, kailangan natin nung factor a perfect square. So, isulat ko lang. We have 4 times 6. And since 4 is a perfect square, all you have to do is to get the square root of that. So, we'll have x is equal to pumupunta na siya sa labas kasi may perfect square siya, which is 2. And then we have square root of 6. Bakit may iwan sa loob si square root of 6? Because square root of 6 does not have an exact square root. Okay, kaya iniwan na natin siya dun sa loob ng radical sign. That's why the answer here is letter C. Okay, so anong, really, anong ginamit ko relationship? Ginamit ko yung relationship no mga elements, or mean, no mga terms, sa isa't isa. We have the second term divided by the first term is equal to the third term divided by the second term. Or, this is also the formula for ratio. Okay? 
So that is how you look for a term, a mean, between two terms, non-consecutive terms. Dahil mean lang yan, ibig sabihin isa lang, mas madaling hanapin kasi gitna lang. Okay? Kaya lang, paano pag hindi na gitna yung hinahanap na term? Like for example, dito, ang pinapahanap na ay two consecutive or two geometric means. You cannot use a formula that was used earlier Kasi, dalawa na yung nawawalang term. And hindi mo makukuha yung dalawang yun if you will use this formula. That's why there is another formula that will be introduced. And that can solve the ratio itself para makuha natin yung mga terms in between 7 and 56. So what we're going to do is to insert Two geometric means sa pagitan ni 7 and ni 56. And to do that, we have to look for the ratio first. So for you to have the ratio, you, you, you will use the formula which is the root of a sub n divided by a sub k. Alam ko, binanggit ko na the last time, where the root depends on the difference of n and k. And again, yung a sub n natin dito refers to the higher term. And so a sub k naman refers to the lower term. And when we have the geometric mean, kadalasan naman ang lower term natin is the first term. Okay, laging first term naman yung binibigay siya. Minsan, second term. Pero depende sa situation. So dito sa case na to, ang lower term natin is the first term and the higher term natin is the fourth term. So all I have to do is to substitute. Okay? So kunin natin ulit. Uh, proceed tayo dito sa kabila. We have 7. Then there are two geometric means. Then we have 56, 56. So we will use a formula. And the formula is R equals the root of A sub N divided by A sub K, where the root depends on the difference of N and K. Let's substitute. If we substitute that, um, we have a sub n. This is our a sub n. And this is our a sub k. Our n is 4. Our k is 1. So, kapag nag-substitute na tayo sa kanya, magiging root of 56 divided by 7. And our n is 4. Our k is 1. Okay. Now this will be 4 minus 1 is 3. The square root of 56 divided by 7. Is it possible for you to divide? What is 56 divided by 7? Yes? Okay. Eight po. Eight. So R is equal to cube root of eight. And what is the cube root of eight? What is the cube root of eight? What is that number? But when you multiply it to itself three times, you get it. Oh, you can use your calculator, cube root. Lagay nyo lang kung yung calculator nyo ay cash mo, pwede nyo ilagay 3. Tapos ano nga yun? May ganito. Tapos lagay nyo 8. 
yan pag cash mo. Mga lumang calculator pa. What is the cube root of 8? Wala kasi, ka, ano yun, wala kasi ako dito yung calculator na ano yun, yung emulator. Yes, Renly Jen? Ito po. Ito po. Wait lang. Uh, tingnan ko kung makahanap ako dito ng ng scientific calculator. Wait lang. Tingnan ko lang kung possible. Meron ba tayo lang? Ah, wala. Wala na kasi akong emulator. Ay, sorry. Ano yung tawag tawag doon? Ano ba yung sinabi ko? Ang hiling ko. Oh, next time siguro. So we have cube root of 8 is 2. Correct. So our R now is 2. All we have to do is to multiply this for us to get the next terms dito sa ating sequence. Okay? So 7 times 2 is? 14. Yes, 14. And dali, dali na lang yan. Times 2? 28. And times 2, we have 56. Okay? So the answer here actually is letter A. So gamitin lang natin yung formula to look for the R. And we'll be able to look for the next terms. Then for number 3, 4, and 5, ang pinapahanap na sa atin ay sum. So, balikan natin yan later kapag na-discuss na natin yung sum, okay? Dito muna tayo sa ratio. Or, I mean, the geometric mean. So, we have geometric mean and this is, or this are, term or terms that is between two non-consecutive terms. And this is number one natin, as you can see, nagkaroon tayo ng dalawang term. And we will insert one in between. Parang ganto lang din. Okay? So, a term, terms between extremes, we call the 7 and 28 as the extremes of a geometric sequence. So, all you have to do is to use the relationship. So, ang ginawa niya, 28 divided by x equals x divided by 7. Pwede rin yung baliktad, tulad tulad ng ginawa ko kanina, inuna ko si second term. Now, x divided by 7 equals 28 divided by x. This is also the same, pareho lang yan. Okay? Then, we cross multiply. We have x squared equals 7 times 28. And that gives you x squared is equal to 196. So if we solve that, we'll have square root of x squared equals the square root of 196. And the square root of 196 is 40. So, lagyan natin siya ng positive or negative. So, it can be positive or negative. Okay, yun ang ibig sabihin nyo. So, ganun din sana kanina dun sa ating ito ba yun? Ito. It should be positive or negative 2 square root of 6. So, ganun din dito. Positive and negative 2 square up. Uh, I mean, 14. Okay. So, bago tayo dumiretso dito sa part na to, I want you to go back sa ating near pod. Mayroon ako dyan binigay ng mga examples na pwede nyo sagutan. So, ang gagawin nyo lang is i-prepare ninyo yung mga mga photos or cards 
may nahanapin ninyo kung ano yung geometric mean ng given explains. Okay? Ibig sabihin, isang geometric mean pa lang i-insert nyo dyan. Ang kandihan. So, bago tayo pong mag-proceed dito sa, sa part na to na marami na geometric mean, we will first answer the near part. So, you have to match the cards. Kung saan yung mga cards na yan ay magmamatch dun sa kung ano yung geometric mean nila. Okay? So, of course, you will be, you are going to solve. Uh, there are 12 students here. At wala pa sila. Ah, yes. O, tatlo pa lang nandito. Pwede na kayo mag-try mag-match. Kung talaga naiintindihan ninyo how to do the the finding of geometric mean. Ayan, so kung nakikita nyo, si Lester at si Aritanyo are able to answer. O pwede nyo siya mo nang isolve para maging tama yung sagot nyo. Siyempre, mas konti yung number of tries. Or if your number of tries and number of matches pareho, 6 over 6, tapos yung time mo 6 din, ibig sabihin, lahat ng sagot may tama. Okay? So, pwede nyo siyang isolve para hindi kayo mahirapan in answering. So, habang ginagawa niya yan, uh, kapag tapos na, pwede mo na mag-CR, uminom ng tubig. Mag-health break tayo kahit mga limang minuto lang. And after this, we will continue. Habang hinihintay natin sila na matapos. So, ano yung kagandahan ng nagsasagot kayo? One of the reason, bakit gustong gusto kong nagsasagot kayo, kasi naniniwala ko dun sa kasabihan na the best teacher is experience. Experience is the best teacher. Okay? If you experience this, you're able to learn kung ano yung geometric mean. So, madali pa lang naman to eh. Kasi, um, isang geometric mean pa lang yung ini-insert natin. So, later explain ko sa inyo, ano, ano ba, how do, how do they, they get the answer? Hindi ko nakapag-aaway. Hindi ko nakapag-aaway. 
Hmm. 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 Dana, how about Anela, Aniban? Ano ba to? Um, Talaro. Hindi ko yata tapos yung Talaro. Lapes, Forteza, Fajardo, Saniza, Castillo. Okay, I think hindi na sila naka-join ulit. Congratulations dun sa mga nakapag-match ng 6 over 6. Si Talaro mukhang ongoing pa rin siya. And congratulations dun sa mga konti lang yung number of tries. Kung nakikita niya naman dito sa ating screen, you're able to answer or match the given cards. With minimum number of tries. And that is Aritanyo and Lester. Uh, pwede, pwede na siguro kay Ligara, no? Let us look at the given. So, meron tayong 3. Ayan lang natin. We have 3, 8, 2, 6, and 25. Or 2 square to 6. 10 and 25, so ang kanyang geometric mean is 50. 1 half and 1 fourth, kanyang geometric mean is 1 fourth. 3 and 1 third, the geometric mean is 1. X and X raised to 7, the geometric mean is X raised to 4. This one is X squared and X raised to 8, and the geometric mean is X raised to 5. Okay, so let me... Give this as an example. Ano na natin kung pwede ko sa i-paste? Ano hindi pwede? Let me open the jumper. Hindi siya pwede i-paste dito. <clears throat> So, ibigay natin na example yung mga nasa cards. So, let us start with yung dalawa. Ano ba ito? Eh, ayaw na niya magalaw. Hindi na lang. <clears throat> Let's start with number or yung una. We have Three and eight. 
So we will look for the geometric mean. So ito yung kanina, di ba yung sinunod natin na we have x squared is equal to the square root of 24 or the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of 24 where x is equal to 2 square root of 6. So doon pa lang, masasagot nyo na ng tama yun kasi nabigay ko na siya kanina. Okay? So this is the answer for the first question or yung dun sa 3. It, how about the 3 and 1 half tapos 1? So let us try solving it. We have 3 and 1 third, I mean the 1 half. Tapos we represent this as the variable x. We have x divided by 3 equals 1 third divided by x. Then we cross multiply. Because multiply dyan magiging x squared. We have x squared is equal to 3 times 1 third. And as you can see, pwede tayo mag-cancel out dito. Cancel 3 in the numerator and 3 in the denominator. So we'll have x squared is equal to 1. And if you get the square root of that, we have x is equal to 1. Positive or negative 1. Okay? Uh, matik na yan na may positive negative jet. X. How about yung ito si 10 and 25 tapos yung mga may variable. So, naim mo natin yung dalawang nasa taas. We have 10 and 25. So, madali na lang to, di ba? Alam na natin that x squared equals 25 times 100. Right? x squared is equal to 2500. 0, 0. And the square root of that is 50. Okay. Next, you one eight and one half. We have x squared is equal to one half times one eight, and that is one over sixteen. Then we get the square root x squared. Get the square root of that. So one over sixteen. Get the square root of that also. And this is x. Then square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 16 is 4. That's why your bar for the geometric mean is 1 fourth. Okay? Next, we have here x and x raised to 7. So, na yung gagawin natin dyan? we will be substituting a variable. So let's say, pwede ba na bang gamit ng ibang variable? Hmm, na yun na lang. If we use that, that would be, ay hindi, gamit tayo ng ibang variable. Kasi may x na tayo dito na gamit. Let's say, a. So, A divided by X is equal to X raised to 7 divided by A. Plus multiply, you'll have A squared is equal times X raised to 7. You know, pag nagmumultiply tayo ng variable, nag-add tayo ng exponent. So, X squared, A squared is equal to X raised to 8. So, get the square root of both sides. So we can cancel this out. Then C A would be equal to the square root of X raised to 8. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng square root of X raised to 8? Ang ibig sabihin po ng square root of X raised to 8 ay yung X mo mayroon siyang exponent na fraction. That's 8 
divided by, ano yung root nito? Since wala, ibig sabihin po yan. Ibig sabihin 8 divided by 2. So, magiging a is equal to x raised to 8 divided divided by 2 is 4. Kaya yung a natin is x raised to 4. Kaya ito yung answer natin. And ganun din dito. Okay? So, magiging ano siya? a is equal to x squared times x raised to 8. Add natin sila. That's x raised to 10. Then we have uh, the square again. Then we have to get the square root. So a is equal to x raised to 10 divided by 2. Or a is equal to x raised to 5. Yes, raised to 5. Okay? So that is how you look for the geometric mean. Meron lang tayong mga variables na nasa examples natin. Wait lang, malulogot na yung aking mute pod. Baka pag namatay, eh, hindi ko na kayo makausap. <clears throat> Nasaan ako? Maayaw na ano ko. Ayan. Okay, let's proceed. So now, we are going to have wait lang. The example kung saan merong two or more two or more geometric mean na hinahanap. Tulad nito, meron tatlong geometric mean na hinahanap. So, all we have to do is to use the formula. So, if we use the formula, kinaibahan niya dun sa kanina, is yung kanina ang hinahanap mo, yung mismong term. Dito ang hinahanap natin ay yung ratio. Kasi pag hindi natin hinahanap yung ratio, we cannot get or we cannot identify that what the term is. So we will use the formula which is R is equal to N minus K root of A sub N divided by A sub K. So we'll have um, this is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. So meron tayong 4 terms. Four or five. Oh, that's five terms. So we have five minus one root of the a sub n, which is sixteen, and the a sub k, which is one. So para sa mga nalilito, this is your a sub n, this is your a sub k, your k is one, your n is five. One, two, three, four, five, comma, five. So we'll continue the solution. 5 minus 1 is 4. It is the fourth root of 16 divided by 1. So pwede na tayo mag-divide dito. No? 16 is still 16. So fourth root of 16. What is the fourth root of 16? What is the fourth root of 16? Yes. Eight po ma. Eight ba? Fourth root? Kapag minotiply mo ba apat na beses, 16 yung lalabas? Yes, Kate. Four po. Four? Four is to four. What is four is to four? Four times two lang yata eh. Four times four lang ata yun eh. Ang, sab ang ibig na sabihin ng 4 dito is what is that number na kapag minultiply mo sa sarili niya ng apat na beses sa 16. <clears throat> sa mga nasa FB live, mukhang mamamatay. Ito ma'am. Wait lang. Mukhang mamamatay na yung ano ko, yung ear pod. Kapag namatay ito, sira kasi yung yung sound driver nung laptop. So, baka mawala din kayo sa FB Live. You can join naman the link. Kasi, 
importante din yung lesson mamaya, yung series, yung pag-aad ng Ms. Yes, what's your answer again? The answer is? May nagbanggit na kanina. Two po, ma'am. Two, yes. Our R is two. So, one times two is two. Two times two is four. Times two is eight. Times two is sixteen. So, ganun lang. Ang paghahanap na all you have to do is to substitute. Okay? Naririnig pa ba ako? Oh, yes, naririnig pa ako. So, let's proceed. Ayan yung kanyang solution. The R is 2. And these are the answers. Next, find the two numbers between 125 and 64. So, we have 125. Then, there are two numbers in between them. And we have also 64. So, all we have to do is to use the formula. Identify muna natin. Alin si A sub N. Alin si A sub K. And what is K? Mostly, ang K natin ay 1. Mostly, ha? Pero hindi ko sinabing all the time. Ayan, nawala na nga ako kasi nawala na yung sound ko. Hindi ko alam kung naririnig pa ako sa FB Live. Manood na lang sila. <coughs> so, our A sub K, naririnig po ba ako? Opo, ma'am. Okay. So, our A sub K is 125. And our A sub N is 64. So, K natin is 1 and N natin is 4. So, we will use that to the formula which is R is equal to N minus K root of A sub N divided by A sub K. Isin lang natin si K minus 1. <clears throat> I minus K pala. <laughs> Then, we will substitute. We'll have R is equal to N, which is 4, minus K, which is 1, root of 64 divided by 125. Now, what is 4 minus 1? Of course, that is 3. So, cube root of 64 divided by 125. So, what is the cube root of 64. <clears throat> what is the cube root of 64 and 125? Okay, ano yung number na kapag multiply mo three times? 64 ang answer. Ano yung number na kapag multiply mo 3 times, magiging 125. Anyone? Who knows the answer? <clears throat> Anong sagot?
Google Meet. Ano yung cube root ng 64? The cube root of 64 is, of course, 4. The cube root of 125 is 5. So, 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Okay. Tingnan nyo nga. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. And 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. O, ngayon, ang R natin is 120. Ay, is 4 over 5. So, how do we get the next terms? Para makuha natin yung next terms, of course, we will multiply. So, 125 at 64, we'll have next 125, 64. Our R is 4 over 5. So, magmultiply lang tayo. You'll have 125 times 4 over 5. Remember that this has a denominator of 1. So numerator is 125 and denominator is 5. They are both divisible by 5. So this is 1. Ito naman, we have 2, 5. Okay, next. We will now multiply. 25 times 4 is? 100. Oh, 1? 100, ma'am. So the next term to 125 is 100. How about the next one? We have 100 times 4 over 5. Remember that 100 has a denominator of 1. We can also cancel out here. When I cancel out tayo, this is 1. And this is 20. Okay? And 20 times 4, we have 80. 80. So the final answer here is 8. Now, what is the two terms in between 125 and 64? That is 100 and 80. Okay, so paano natin nakuha yun? First, we solve for the ratio. And then after finding the ratio, we simply multiply for us to get the next terms. Okay. Now, ano yung formula na ginamit natin? We call this the formula for common ratio. And that is R equals N minus K root of A sub N divided by A sub K. Where n is the number of terms and k is usually 1 since the first term is always given. And r means common ratio. Okay? They so have here um, the question earlier na binigay ko sa inyo. And now we are going to insert Dito sa number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, ang natin is um, solve na lang natin yung mga ratio. Okay? So, let us have number 1. We have 2 and 6, 8, 6. Ano kaya yung magiging ratio niyan? Let us solve. So, R is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 minus 1, root of 6, 8, 6 divided by 2. So what is 6, 8, 6 divided by 2? Ayan, mag 343. 343. That is cube root of 343. What is the cube root of 343? What is the cube root of 343? 
Medyo mahina pa kayo sa mga root root, ha? Dapat inaaral nyo yon Ano yung cube root ng ganito? Ano yung cube root ng ganyan? Okay, kasi matagal kayo sumagot pag mga root root na eh. Pero pag mga divide lang plus minus, kaya nyo. Paano ba yan gagawin sa calculator? <clears throat> Wala kasi tayong emulator eh. Wait lang. Calculator. Ah, hindi pala store. Store. Calculator emulator. Try ko online ha. Kasi ano eh. Ano ba to? Feeling ko isa sa rason. Bakit nahihirapan kayo kasi wala kayong calculator, tama? Okay na akong calculator dito. Eight na lang yun. Ano na ito? <laughs> Yung mga kung ano ang calcule. I like more than... Hindi ko alam kung ano yung dito. Sige, download natin. Mahirapan kayo mag-anay. Kaya ko sa inyo paano mag- ng... Do you have your calculator? Meron kayo calculator dyan? Ha? May calculator ba kayo? Ang iba sa inyo, may calculator kayo? Meron ba, ma'am? O, paano kayo nagsasolve ng ano? Wait lang nga, nagtatry akong mag-ano eh. Ay, but she's... Oh my gosh, mali, mali, mali. Mali pa yung na-install ko nga, no? No language. <laughs> so, no. Ano ba tayo stop? Okay. Install it na natin siya Uh, ano ni mo na yung ano habang ini-install ko? What is the cube root of 343? Yes, Kate. No 7 po. 7. So, habang The answer is 7. Okay. 
So, paano makukuha? Mamaya ituturo ko sa inyo. So, ngayon, ang R natin is 7. Ano lang ibig sabihin nun? Ang ibig sabihin lang nun, multiply natin siya sa 7 for us to get the next term. So, 2 times 7 is 14. 14 times 7 is? What is 14 times 7? What is 14 times 7? Yes, Kate? 98. 98. How about for number 2? So, brain ko na po ito, ha? Mag-install ko yung calculator para may tuturo ko kung paano. So, for number 2, wait lang, may napipindot yata ako, kaya nagahang yung pen, tablet. Nasa na ako. Nakita nyo ba yan? Okay. So, R is equal to N minus K. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 5... Iusog lang natin ng konti. R is equal to 5 minus, pangilan to? 2. Root of, kailangan taasan natin. So, root of 3 over 64 divided by 24. So, what is 5 minus 2? That's 3. Square root of... Dahil division to, we have to copy the numerator and then multiply it to the reciprocal of 24. Ang reciprocal ng 24 natin ay 1 over 24. So, pwede tayo mag-cancel out dyan. And mag-finish pa ano na tayo installation. 3 and 24, so we have 1, 24, 8, and we have cube root of 1 over 64 times 8. <clears throat> what is 64 times 8? Yes, Kate. Ay, si Reni Jen naman. Reni Jen? Twelve po. 512 po. So, kunin natin yung cube root. Cube root ng 1 is 1. Cube root ng 512 is? Tingnan ko muna ko nandito na yung calculator. <coughs> Ayan. Wait lang. Ayan, nakikita nyo ba? Ano kong mukuha ng ano, ng cash? Medyo lito natin. Okay. Ayan. So, paano kong mukuha ng cube root? Ito, shift. Tapos, may kita nyo may ganyan. Isang pindot lang. Then you have to put 5, 1, 2. Okay, so bibigay niya sa inyo 8. Or pwede rin naman natin gawin yung root tapos fraction. Lagay natin 1 over 512. Tapos equal niya siya. Makikita niyo 1 over 8 yung ibibigay niyang answer. So our answer here is 1 over 8. So, the ratio is 1 over 8. So, ano pa yung pwede natin gawin using the emulator or your calculator? So, dito, the by so solve, yung multiply pa natin siya to, to 24. Sa calculator, kung may calculator kayo, pwede yung diretso na, no? So, 24, multiply natin siya sa fraction, which is 1 over 
Or bigyan niya na agad sa inyo, the answer is 3. Okay? So, paano naman kapag 3? 3 times 1 1 over 8 3 8. So, ang kagandahan pag may calculator kayo, hindi kayo nahihirapang mag-solve. Okay? So, ano yung sagot natin dito kanina? The answer here is 3. And dito naman ang answer is 3 over 8. How about this one? So, dahil nandito si first term ang inahanap natin, all we have to do is to divide. Okay? So, magdi-divide tayo. Calculator natin para mabilis. <coughs> So, we have 24 divided by yung fraction, which is 1 over 8. We have 192. So, sana nakikita nyo sa screen ko, no? 192. Okay? Wait lang. Hindi ko na kayo nakikita. <clears throat> Napin ko kayo. Ayan. May nagsasagot naman pala sa ano. Sorry, hindi ko nakikita sa in-call messages. How about for number 3? Sa so number 3, napakadali lang po. Bakit? Kasi meron tayong consecutive terms. And ano ba yung kagandahan pag meron consecutive terms? Pag consecutive terms, kunin mo lang po yung kanilang ratio. Alam mo na agad po ano yung ratio nilang lahat. Okay? So this is 4 and 8. So 8 natin divide by 4. And that is equal to 2. Ibig sabihin, the ratio is 2. So this is 2. Ngayon, dahil pabalik tayo, imbes na multiply, divide ang gagawin natin. Division. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. Divided by 2 is 1. Divided by 2 is 1 half. Okay. Next, this one also very easy kasi magkatabi lang din sila. Kunin lang din natin yung kanilang ratio. So, yung one-half muna sa numerator divided by one-fourth. And kapag nag-divide po kayo ng fraction, tatandaan ninyo that you have to copy the first term or the numerator. Ito yung kukopyahin ninyo yung numerator. And then, you get the reciprocal of the denominator. So, yung reciprocal po niyan, ilagay niya dito. Then you will proceed to multiplication. Multiplication. So one fourth is four over one. Then we can cancel out yung mga sim yung mga uh, numbers in the numerator and denominator na merong common factor, which is two. Or both divisible by two. Two divided by two is one. Four divided by two is two. So kalalabasan nito two times one is 2, 1 times 1 is 1. So, our ratio here is 2. So, dahil papunta tayo dito, sa kanan, magmumultiply tayo, 1 half times 2 is 1. Dahil papunta naman tayo doon, magdi-divide tayo. So, that's 1 fourth divided by 2, or 1 fourth times 1 half, which is equal to 1 eighth. So, this is 1 eighth, this is 1 fourth, this is 1 half, and this is 1. So, dito naman sa number 5, madali lang din. Ano lang yung gagawin? Kunin lang muna natin yung ratio using the formula. So, the ratio would be, wait lang, bura tayo. Ratio is equal to, ano tayo na? Pakulay ratio is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 minus 1, root of 1 third divided by 81. Ayan. Napakapangit ko talaga magsulat ng R. R. 6 minus 1 is 5. Then we have one third times reciprocal ng 81. That's 1 over 81. So we'll get fifth root of 
One third times one over eighty one. Pwede kayo mag calculator dyan. So one third. One third. Times. Another fraction. One over eighty one. Ay, sorry. Hindi mo pala dapat mo. Uh, dapat eighty. Yeah. So we have 1 divided by 2 over, I mean, 1 over 2 for 3. So para makuha natin yung fifth root, fifth root niyan, all you have to do is to shift and then ito. May makikita kayo, yan may symbol siya dyan. box siya dun sa root nagayin nyo dyan 5 tapos sa loob since fraction nagayin natin 1 over 2 for 3 tapos equal natin so we have 1 third as the answer so madali kapag may calculator kayo so we have r is equal to 1 third ano na yung gagawin natin Multiply natin to one third. This will be twenty seven nine three one. Okay, so ganon lang po kapag kinukuha yung ratio. Okay, next. Let's proceed to the geometric series. So, huwag na natin balikan yung kanina kasi marami ng mga examples dito. Sa geometric series, still it is the sum of terms of a geometric sequence. Geometric sequence. Okay. And yung kailangan yung tandaan when it comes to geometric series. Basta may series, tignan nyo muna. Is that geometric? Is that arithmetic? Nakadepende doon yung tawag sa kanya. For arithmetic, of course, that's arithmetic series. And kapag geometric, that is geometric series. Now, kapag geometric series, kung doon sa arithmetic, sa arithmetic, inaalam natin if last term is given or not. Dito naman sa geometric series, what we need to look at is if the sequence is infinite or finite. Ano ba ibig sabihin kapag infinite? Paano mo malalaman if your sequence is infinite? Anyone? Aquino, I want you to raise your hand. Lahat kayo. Kung nandyan po kayo. Kung nandyan po kayo, I want you to raise your hand. Uh, andyan pala si Forteza. Forteza! Anong ibig sabihin kapag infinite? Forteza? Nicole? Si Nicole ba yun yung nagsasagot? Nicole Trisha? Anong ibig sabihin pag infinite? Huh? Balikan lang natin. Yes po. It Lapo has no end. Then. It has no last term. It's infinite. And usually, um, the way we use the word infinity, that means it has no end. It is forever. Tuloy-tuloy. Okay? While finite, it has an end. It has a last term. Wait lang, magbabasa lang ako ng message. Hmm. 
Ibig sabihin nito. Ang ang front line. Wala naman ako dyan. Okay. So, meron tayong dalawang klase ng, fine, ng geometric series. Yung una is yung finite geometric series. Finite kasi the given sequences has the last term. The given sequences has an ending. Okay? It is, it is not like the infinite, which is limitless. So, the formula here is S sub N is equal to A sub 1 times 1 minus R raised to N equal, I divided by 1 minus R. So, I want you to write that para mamaya, pag tinanong ko kayo, may masasagot kayo. Ulitin ko, we have S sub N is equal to the first term, A sub 1, times 1 minus R raised to N divided by 1 minus R. So, that is our formula for finite geometric series. Okay? You all know that S sub N means the sum of the N terms. And A sub 1 is the first term. N is the number of terms. And R is the common ratio. So let's proceed to the example. So dito meron tayong finite sequence. No? Find the sum of the first five terms. So hanggang dun lang sa first five terms yung pinapahanap niya. Ibig sabihin, the sequence is finite. Kakaintindihan? Or should I say, the number of terms that we're going to add, is it has a limit. Now, what is the formula again? The formula is, yeah, you can turn on your mic, S sub N is equal to, Anyone who knows the formula? Aritano? Rodriguez? Oh, do you know the formula? Sige, please state the formula, Aritano. A sub 1 times 1 minus R raised to N over 1 minus R? Yes, correct. So, para mas matandaan nyo siya, pareho siyang may 1 minus R numerator and denominator. Pero dito may raise yung N. May raise to N. Ano yun? Storbo ka. <laughs> ano ka dyan? So, our N is 5. Uy, hindi ko makita yung tinuturo ko. Mayos ka dyan. Mayos ka dyan. Wait lang, nabasa yung... Okay. Our N is 5. Our first term is 4. ano kasunod? Our R is... What do you think is our R? 4 tapos naging negative 12. Ano yung R natin? R is... 3 po, ma'am. 3? 3 lang ba? Negative. Negative. Ah, yes. Negative. Okay. Negative 3. So, we will substitute S sub 5. S sub 5 is equal to the first term times 1 minus or gamit tayo dito ng yan. Kasi so may negative siya eh. Raised to N. Our N is 5. Divided by 1 minus negative 3. So, ito muna tayo. Negative 3 raised to 5. So, para magawa nyo yun, dun tayo, parenthesis muna, negative 3, or dun muna tayo sa ano, sa my exponent. Yan. Tapos, parenthesis, lagay natin negative 3, Close natin. Tapos, raise to 
Ah, yan. Then we'll get negative 243. So we have 4 times 1 minus negative 243. Pansinin niyo dahil add yung ating exponent, naging negative yung answer natin. Next, 1 minus negative 3, change the sign, proceed to addition, that this is, this became 4. So, pwede na tayong mag-cancel out dito, no? Kahit hindi na natin hintayin yan. Yan. So, cancel this out. This is 1. This is 1. So, ang matitira na lang yung nandito sa loob. Ay, hindi na tayong mag-aano. So, 1 minus negative 3. Ay, 243. So, we have to change the sign and proceed to addition. So, we'll have 1 plus 243. That is 244. So, the sum of the five terms, the first five terms, is equal to 244. <clears throat> okay? So, that is... The solution for this question. Next. Ah, papakita pala niya. Mm. Ito naman. A piece of spoiled meat has some bacteria in it. Number of bacteria increases five times every hour. If the number of bacteria is 1,000 on the first hour, we have to complete the sequence until 5 hours. So what do you think is, or, or the terms? What are the terms? What do you think are the terms? So you have 1,000. What is next to 1,000? If it increases 5 times every hour, 1,000. The next term is? <clears throat> 5,000, ma'am. 5,000. Tama. Ganon din yung sagot ni Lester. Next to 5,000 is? What is next 25, to 5,000? 25K. Next to 25K? 125. 125,000. Nagdaga mo naman ng 1,000. Next, 125 is? 600. Yes, Denver. Nag-raise sila ng handela. Yes. 625,000. 625,000, correct. Next, we have to solve for the total number of bacteria at the end of five hours. So, sa tingin ninyo, what is the total number of bacteria? Okay, so, 625,000. Yun ba yung total? Lahat-lahat? Kasi, ano eh, tawag dito, sa umpisa, merong isang libong bacteria. Tapos, nag increase siya. So, aside from 1,000, nadagdagan pa ng 5,000. Nag-increase na naman siya, nadagdagan na naman ulit. So, what do you think is the sum or the total number of the bacteria? Sino ba yung nag-raise? Matatakpan yata yung kamay ninyo. Sino yung nag -raise? Pwede na magsalita? Ma'am, ako po. Yes po. Ano po yung answer natin? 781,000. 781,000. Do you agree with her answer? Agree? Ako wala na nagsalita. Oh, do you agree with her answer? Ay, na nila magsalita. Silence means yes. So, the sum of the terms 
sum of the five terms is 781,000, meaning there are 781,000 bacteria at the end of at the end of five hours. Okay. Let's proceed. So naman, um, let's just answer this two and then we will proceed. Do naman sa infinite. Okay. So, we have your number one. Find the sum of the first six terms of a geometric sequence whose first term is two and common ratio is two-thirds. So, we will identify first yung mga given. Ang given natin is n, which is 6. First term is 2. 6, 2. And the ratio is 2 thirds. Substitute natin is a formula. So we'll have s sub 6 is equal to 6. Ay, ano ba yung unang ano natin? Ano ba yung formula natin? s sub n is equal to the first term times 1 minus r raised to n divided by n minus r, or 1 minus r. Okay, substitute natin. So we'll have 2 times 1 minus 2 third raised to 6. Gamit tayo dito ng bracket. Divided by 1 minus 2 third. So, si 2 over 3 raised natin sa 6. So, ito muna. Ay, ba't yun? Hello. Ayan. <laughs> Makala kayo niya na bumo kasi eh. That's, ano ba muna? Ito muna, tapos parenthesis, fraction, ay yung gulo, nakakaasal. Ito muna, parenthesis, parenthesis tayo. Ayan nga muna natin dito ng ano, one, let's say one. Ayan. Two over three raise natin siya to six. So the answer is sixty four over seven to nine, seven hundred twenty nine. So we have here two times. 1 minus 64 over 729. Next, 1 minus 2 third. Alam nyo na yan, 1 can be converted to fraction. That's 3 over 3. So 3 minus 1, uh, 3 minus 2 is 1. So that's 1 third. Next, we will subtract this. 1 minus 64 over 729. Let us have one minus answer na lang. So we'll get 665 over 729. Anong ulit? <laughs> Nakalimutan, no? 665? O, oh, tama. 665. So we have... 2 times 6, 6, 5 over 7, 2, 9. Divided by 1 third. O, oh, i-multiply natin to. Pwede ba siya i-multiply? Yes, multiply natin yan. Ano magiging sagot natin pag may multiply? Times 2. Ayan. 1, 3, 3, 0. So we have 
1330 over 729. Aba pala ng solution. Dat pala nilipat ko sa kabila, no? Divided by 1 third. May 1 third yan, ha? So, since we are dividing, all we have to do is to copy the numerator. The numerator is 1330 divided by 729 times the reciprocal, which is 1 third. Reciprocal of 1 third, which is 3 over 1. See, 729 is divisible by 3. Tayo natin. 729. Alam nyo na yan, divide by 3. 2, 4, 3. This is 2, 4, 3. And this is 1. See, 1, 3, 3, 0. Check natin. 1, 3, 3, 0. Divided by 2, 4, 3. Meron ba siyang final answer? Awala. So, our final answer here the sum of the six terms is 1, 3, 3, 0 over 243. Mahaba pala to, no? Dapat pala sa isang page natin nilagay. Ito, one third to one third. Okay, so ito po yung sum nung una, no? Number one. First six terms. Alam nyo kung bakit ganito yung sum niya? Kasi yung ratio niya is 2 third So, it makes the next terms as fraction. So, kapag inad mo yun, magkakaiba sila ng denominator. No? Kaya, nakita nyo, lumaki yung value ng denominator. And, of course, damay na dun sa numerator. Next, um, let us have number 2. Kunin lang muna natin yung mga values, no? The, the sum of the first 10 terms. So, n natin is 10. Sequence is 4 to 1. So, first term is 4. Ano yung ratio natin dito? What is the ratio here? 4 naging 2. Yes, aritan nyo. 1 half po. Negative Correct. 1 half. Negative ba? Pareho naman silang positive ba? Hindi po pala, ma'am. Positive. So, n is 4. Ay, n is 10. First term is 4. Ratio is 1 half. So, dito tayo sa kabila. 10, 4, 1 half. 10, 4, 1 half. So, n is 10. First term is 4. R is 1 half. So, substitute lang natin siya dun sa formula, which is S sub N is equal to the first term times 1 minus R raised to N divided by 1 minus R. Okay? Pwede tayo. S sub 10 is equal to the first term, 4. Ah, hindi na natin kailangan gumamit nito. Ah, kailangan pa rin. which is 1 minus 1 half raised to 10 divided by 1 minus 1 half. So what is 1 half raised to 10? Oh, ganun ulit. Um, 1 half <laughs> Raise to 10. <laughs> Ngingi ng tao dito. <laughs> 1 over 1024. So this is 4 times 1 minus 1 over 1024. Divided by, what is 1 minus 1 half? Of course, that's 1 half. Next, magma-minus lang tayo ng 1 dun sa whole. So, ibig sabihin, ito ay magiging 1,024 divided by 1,024 
minus 1 divided by 1024. Okay. Next. So this is, alam nyo na yung magiging answer dyan na pa simple 4 times 1023 over 1024 divided by 1 half. Next, C4 at C1024 is both divisible by 4. Check natin ha. Both divisible by 4. Yes, they are both divisible by 4. So, pwede tayo mag-divide by 4. This is 1. Ay, bakit ito 1 din? It is 256. So, ano yung magiging solution ko dito? Magiging 1,023 over 256 divided by 1. Copy the numerator, 1,023 divided by 256 times 1 half, which is 2 over 1. Okay? Then, pwede tayo mag-divide ng 2. Dito. Divided by 2, this is 1, this is 128. So, ang magiging answer natin ay 1,023 over 128. So, check natin kung tingin ko naman hindi siya divisible o oh, hindi siya divisible. So, the sum of the first 10 terms of the sequence is 1,023 over 128. So, Ganyan po, paano magsusolve kapag fraction yung ratio. Okay, naiintindihan? Now, let us proceed to geometric sequence. So, when we say geometric sequence na infinite, meaning it is endless, the terms or, yeah, the terms are limitless. Okay, endless and limitless. It has no last term, right? And this time, dahil tayo ay nasa series, ang ibig sabihin nito, lahat ng term na yon, whether endless siya or limitless siya, kailangan natin makuha yung sum. So sa tingin ninyo, kaya it's possible for us to find the sum of endless terms, Possible kaya yon Makuha natin yung sum ng mga terms, which is endless. Yes or no? So, I-type nyo po sa, ano, sa in-call messages natin. Possible ba makuha natin yung sum of terms if it's endless? Do you believe in that? Is it yes or a no? Pawan naman yung mga nasa FB live na lang natin. Pito pa naman sila. Okay, so let's find out. Mga hindi rin kayo sigurado. Um, dapat gagawin natin to, pero wag na lang. No, kailangan meron kayong um, paper. Then you will divide that into two symmetrical halves. Then you will shade the other part. Okay, so depende kung anong kulay ang gusto nyo. Then, we have to divide the unshaded part sa another half and then shade again. Then, we will continue the process. So, like for example, if you have this paper, na kapag hinati natin siya into two symmetrical halves and then we color the other one, maging ganyan itsura niya, so, meron tayong one half. Okay? Next, if I do the same thing dun sa natira na papel, magkakaroon ako ng one fourth. Then, I have one eighth, one sixteenth, one thirty two, one over thirty two, one over sixty four, one over 
128, and so on and so forth. And kung mapapansin nyo, tuloy lang ng tuloy ang paghati ng two symmetrical halves until you stop because you cannot do it na. Pansinin ninyo, I formed a geometric sequence and that geometric sequence is one half, one fourth, one eighth, one over 16, one over 32, one over 64, and so on. Pero, pag in ko lahat ng sequence na yan, or I mean, the terms, pag in ko lahat ng terms niyan hanggang sa dulong, 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 dulo, pinaka dulo, pinaka last na term, nitong sequence na to, mapapansin nyo, ang kanilang sum ay one pa rin. Right? Kasi nang galing siya sa isang buo, kinalahate, 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 and so on. Okay? So, it is possible for us to add or to get the sum of the terms even if it is infinite. Like this sequence, it is infinite but we can find the sum which is 1. So, ganun din po dun sa mga susunod natin na sequences. We can find the sum but there is a condition that we need to remember. Ano po yun? The condition is that if it is converges or diverges. What do you mean by converges and diverges? Pag converges po, if the sequence partial sum approaches a finite number. An infinite geometric sequence, a series in which the sequence of a partial sum approaches finite number. That is um, converges and Pag converges po, there is a sum. Paano malalaman pong converges? Mamaya mapakita ko sa inyo. Okay? Next, pag diverges naman, the sequence has a partial sum that continues to grow. Dahil yung sum niya, yung partial sum niya continues to grow, we cannot identify or we cannot determine the sum. That's why pag diverges, there is no sum. Unlike kay converges, yung partial sum approaches a finite number. Pwede natin makuha yung sum. Dito, the sum continues to grow. Ito, the sum approaches a certain number, a finite number. So yun yung pinagkaiba nila. Pag converges, may sum. Pag diverges, there is no sum. Paano malalaman? Titingnan nyo lagi yung ratio. Yung ratio kapag <clears throat> greater than negative 1 or less than 1, yung ratio niya may sum. Pag diverges, yung ratio niya is greater than negative 1 or equal to negative 1. O kaya naman, greater than 1 Greater than or equal to 1. Okay. Ano yung ibig sabihin nun? If the ratio is in between negative 1 and 1, yung nasa pagitan niya, basta hindi magiging negative 1, ha? Basta hindi magiging negative 1 at hindi magiging 1 yung ratio mo, merong sum yan. There is a sum. Let's say, negative one-half. Hindi pa siya negative one, di ba? Negative one over 16. Hindi pa siya negative one. Therefore, may sum pa. Let's say, ang ratio natin, buray natin sa negative 16. Let's say, ang ratio natin ay positive one-fourth. Dahil hindi pa siya nagiging negative 1, dahil 1 fourth yung kanyang ratio, there is a sum. Paano malalaman kung walang sum? If your ratio is greater than negative, or less than, should be less than. If your ratio is less than negative 1, ano ni mga less than negative 1? Less than or equal to, that's negative 1, 
negative 2, negative 3. Okay? Pag yung r mo naman is greater than or equal to 1, let's say ang, ang ratio mo ay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, there is no sum. Kung ano lang yun nasa pagitan ni negative 1 at 1, yun lang ang may sum. Kung anong ratio lang yun nasa pagitan ni negative 1 and 1, yun lang ang may sum. So, let us have an example. We have here 1 third, 1, 3, 9, 27, and 81. Sa so, tingin ninyo, ano yung ratio nito? Ano yung ratio nito? What do you think is the ratio? Anyone? Who knows the ratio of this? 3 po, ma'am. 3, correct. So, the ratio of this sequence is 3. Since the ratio is 3, do you think it has a sum or walang sum? May sum Meron or walang? Po. Yes, Kate? Meron po. Meron po. Uh, nasa pagitan ba siya ni negative 1 tsaka ni 1? Eight, nasa pagitan si 3 ba? Nasa pagitan ni negative 1 at 1? Naalala niyo yung number line? Diba sa number line may 0, may 1, may negative 1... Lahat lang ng nasa gitna ni negative 1 at ni 1, yun lang yung may sum. So, if it's 3, may sum o wala? Sige, pwede nyo i-turn on yung mic niya if you want to answer. May sum o wala? Wala po, ma'am. Wala po. Kasi, greater than 1 yung kanyang R. Okay? Basta greater than or equal to 1, walang sum. Basta less than or equal to negative 1, walang sum. So, let's try another one. Tingnan natin. Next, we have 1, negative 2. 4, negative 8, 16, negative 32. What do you think is the ratio? The ratio is? Madali lang yung ratio niyan. Ano yung minamultiply natin to get the next term? Yes, salita nyo. Negative 2 po. Negative 2. Is it less than negative 1? Kasi kung less than negative 1 siya, ibig sabihin, it has no sum. So since negative 2 is less than or equal to negative 1, therefore, it has no sum. Okay? So do, these are examples of sequences na walang sum. Bakit? Kasi nagko-continue to grow yung kanyang sum. Pag kinuha mo yung sum niya, hindi natatapos kasi tuloy-tuloy yung paglaki ng sum. Nakaintindihan. Let us have another one. I have here one half, one fourth, one eighth, one over sixteen, one over thirteen. Sa so, tingin ninyo, ano yung R nito? Or the ratio of this? The ratio is Rene Jen? One half to one. Correct. That's one half. So dahil ang ratio niya ay one half, sa tingin ninyo, may sum o wala? Is there a sum or walang sum? Yes, Aritanyo? Meron po. Meron po. Kasi, nasa pagitan siya ni negative 1 and ni 1. 
How about 30, 9, ay, 90, 30, 10, 10 over 3, 10 over 9? Anong ratio nito? The ratio of this is? One third. One third, correct. Since one third ang ratio, may sum o wala? Wala po. Wala daw. How about the others? Yes, Kate? Meron po. Meron po. How about 3 over 5? 12 over 25? 48 over 12? Or siguro ano to? 125? 195 over 625. Sa so, tingin niyo ano yung ratio nito? The ratio of this is? Okay, kaya niyo yan. Habang nagbabasa ako dito. Ano daw to? Ano daw to? Uh, ano po? Ayan, sabi ni Legara, 4 over 5 po. Yes, correct. The answer is 4 over 5. Pansinin ninyo, minultiply ito sa 4, kaya naging 12. Ito, minultiply sa 5, kaya naging 25. That's why the ratio is 4 over 5. So, since 4 over 5, may mayroon ba tong sum o wala? Is there a sum or wala pong sum? As long as hindi siya nagiging 1, there is a sum. Therefore, lahat po ng mga yan is an example of a geometric sequence, infinite geometric sequence na merong sum. Okay? Possible na makuha natin yung sum ng mga yan. So, ano ba yung formula natin for infinite geometric series? Kanina, finite geometric series. Ngayon, infinite geometric series ang meron tayo. And of course, a formula is different from the previous formula that we have. Yung kanina is S sub n is equal to the first term times 1 minus r raised to n divided by 1 minus r, right? So ito yung formula natin for finite. And for infinite naman, we have this formula. S sub n is equal to the first term divided by 1 minus r. Okay, so let's try to use this. So dito sa sequence na to, we have to use the infinity sign kasi that means it has no end, it is limitless. So the first term here, as you can see sa ating sequence, ito yung sequence natin. The first term is 25 and we have 1 minus negative 1 over 5. Kasi yun po yung um, sa sequence natin. Okay? Now, negative, neg uh, minus, then negative, change the sign, proceed to addition. So that is 1 plus 1 over 5. So ang ginawa niya, ginawa niya yung 5 over 5 yung 1. 1 plus 5 is 6. 5, copy. So we have 25 over 6 over 5. Then multiply natin, copy the numerator, get the reciprocal of the denominator. So yung 6 na punta sa denominator, yung 5 na punta sa numerator. And we have 125 over 6. So the sum of infinity, sum of infinity is equal to 125 over 6. Okay, next we have Negative, I mean, 0.2, then 0 0.04, 0 0.008, and so on. So the first term is 0 0.2. Then the ratio also is 0 0.2. That's why we have 0 0.2 divided by 1 minus 0 0.2. So madali na lang yan. 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.8, we have 0 0.25. Okay? 
Now, let us try to solve ito. Sagutan natin to. Subukan natin siyang sagutan. So, yung first term is one half. Ratio is one half. And ano pa yung nawawala? Let's, ayun lang pala. First term tsaka ratio lang. So, first term is one half. Ratio is one half. So the formula again is S sub N is equal to the first term divided by 1 minus R. So, ang dali-dali lang na itong formula na ito kapag infinity. So, S sub infinity is equal to the first term, which is 1 half, and we have 1 minus 1 half. If 1 minus 1 half is also 1 half, so we have 1 half divided by 1 half. So, 1 half, copy the numerator, multiply it to the reciprocal of the denominator. The reciprocal is 2 over 1. Cancel this out. This is 1, this is 1. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1. Therefore, the sum of infinity is equal to 1. So, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina na itong klase ng sequence na to. Ito yung nandun sa papel, dun sa activity kanina. Okay. Now, let's try. Yung pangalawa, we have 90, tapos the ratio is one-third. <clears throat> the first term is 90, and the ratio is one-third. Let us try to solve. So, S sub infinity is equal to the first term divided by 1 minus 1 third. So, this will be 90 divided by 1, third, 1 minus 1 third. So, that's 2 thirds equals 90. Multiply natin siya to the reciprocal of 2 thirds. So, yung reciprocal ng 2 third is 3 over 2. Pwede tayong mag-cancel out dyan. Anong i-cancel out natin? Remember that this has a denominator of 1. So, nasa numerator siya. Ito nasa denominator. Pwede tayong mag-cancel out since they are both divisible by 2. Now, we only have 1 times 1 in the denominator. So, that's already 1. 45 times 3. What is 45 times 3? What is, yes, Kate? 135. 135. So, the sum of infinity is equal to 135. And then, last, last example. Um, the first term is 3 fifth, and the R is 4 over 5. First term is 3 fifth. First term is 3 fifth. A sub 1 is 3 fifth. And the ratio is 4 over 5. Dali lang to. Sum of infinity is equal to the first term divided by 1 minus R. So we have 3 over 5 divided by 1 minus 4 over 5. So alam nyo na yan, 1 over 5 yan. So copy the numerator, multiply sa reciprocal nitong 1 fifth. So that's 1 over, ay 5 over 1. So cancel this out. Ulitin ko lang. Ang bura kasi si 1. So, cancel this out. This is 1. This is 1. O, di ba? Ang dali lang. <laughs> Mas madali pa to. Mukhang komplikado kanina, no? Pero, sa tingin nyo, ah, sa pag-solve natin, ang dali lang niya isolve. So, we have 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 1 is 1. So, the sum of infinity is equal to 3. Di ba? Ang dali lang niya.
Okay, so that's for the infinite geometric series. If you don't have any question, that would be all for our sum of infinity. So ito mga sample problems na lang to siguro i isi-send ko na lang sa chat sa inyo as picture. No para ma matingnan niyo ren. Okay, and kasi 10:30 na. Ako namang sumobra sa oras. Sobrang sobra sa oras. Should I do? Should I keep this or this card? This card na natin. Yeah. May kopya naman ako nito. Yung 32 hanggang 32 hanggang 38. Send ko siya sa inyo as an example. So if there are no questions, I want you to type done. Sa ating in-call messages. And ganun din sa FB Live. Sabi nila, di na daw nila ako naririnig. So, type ko na lang yung gusto kong sabihin. Ayan. And kung naguguluhan pa... Ipopost ko na lang tong video na to. Siguro, hihintayin ko pa muna kung kailan siya masisend sa akin ni Gmail, ni Google Meet. Okay, so kung naka-laptop kayo at gusto nyo magkaroon ng emulator tulad nito, uh, punta lang kayo dito. Sa scientific calculator, emulator. So pwede kayo dyan mag-download. Yung iba may bayad, huwag niyong kunin yun, syempre. Doon kayo sa walang bayad. Ito kasi class pad manager. Hindi ko alam po ano yan eh. Hindi ko pa yun try gamitin. So, iba't ibang klaseng calculator yan. Dito kayo sa scientific calculator. So, hindi niya naman gagamitin yung mga yan. Yan, dito lang kayo sa, ano, sa scientific calculator. Tapos, pili lang kayo dyan anong gusto nyong emulator. Download nyo. Pag nag-download kayo, ilalagay nyo lang kung kayo ay teacher or student. Um, then, piliin nyo lang yung inyong country. Philippines. Then, I have read. Tapos, download. Anon lang. So, may kita nyo magda-downloading na yan. Uh, allow. And makikita nyo, nag-download na siya. So, in folder nyo lang. So, meron na kayong ganyan, di ba? Open with Windows Explorer. Tapos, click nyo lang yan. May lalabas dyan, install. Yan, i-install nyo na siya para meron kayong calculator sa laptop nyo. Ganun lang siya kadali. Tapos, sa so pipiliin kayo, syempre, English. Tapos, ayan, mag install na siya ng kusa. Ayan, mag install na siya ng kusa. Ay, accept lang. Next, next. Install. Kung mga nakalaptop kayo ha. Kung hindi naman sa cellphone, sa Google Play Store, maraming mga calculators na available. Pwede nyo rin yun gawin para hindi nyo na kailangan bumili since hindi naman tayo face-to-face -face pa. Ha Kasi baka mga ilang buwan face-to-face -face na rin tayo. So, pwede nyo itong gamitin for the meantime. Or maganda rin na meron kayong sarili niyong calculator. Okay? So, ina natin kung na-install na siya. So, malalaman niyo kung naka-install na siya kasi. Wait lang. Ipakita ko sa inyo na naka-install na siya. 
sa presenting tayo. And present natin yung entire, entire screen. So, malalaman niya kung naka-install na siya kapag kapag ito, ito o. Oh. Ayan. Ito na yung calculator. Medyo maliit lang kasi yung ano ko eh. Pagugulo kasi yung ano ko pag ayan o, no, malaki. Kaya hindi ko nilalakihan. Ayan. Ito, makikita nyo na siya dyan. Pag in-open nyo siya, so ba diba, ito yung kanina. Ah, wait lang. Ito yung isa, ba diba? Ito naman yung isa pa. Wait lang, open ko lang. Ayaw pa niya bumukas eh. Baka ayaw niyang nakabukas yung isa. Close natin. No, I want my current version. Yes. Tapos, ayan, nalabas na siya. So, para lang siyang black version nung kanina. So, syempre may mga differences yan sa ano. Uh, I think dun sa mga functions. Pero kayo na bahala tumingin, mag-explore. Ang, kaya ko lang siya pinakita sa inyo para... Hindi kayo mahirapan pag nagka-calculator kayo. Okay? So, and that's it for our class for today. I am happy that mayroon tayong 23 na sudyante na pumasok and 6 from the FB Live. So, sana Yung iba pumasok the next time. I, I hope you learned something from to, uh, from today's lesson. Thank you for being here today. Enjoy your day and have a great day. Have a delicious lunch. Thank you. Ay na kayo. Pwede na mag-leave. Para masave ko na tong video. Haba ng klase namin ngayon. One hour and 24, ay 2 hours and 24 minutes. Mahaba kasing lesson eh. Bye-bye! Leave na po kayo. I-remove ko kayo pag di kayo nag-leave. Deang, Valenzuela, Raymart, Galit. Sige, remove ko na kayo. Mukhang nawala na kayo talaga ng tuluyan. Tixon, remove na kita. Okay.